Hey everybody, Jake here. And today we're going to take a look at the Monteverde Impressa. So Monteverde is a fairly well-known pen brand, and I haven't had good experiences with them. However, this is kind of their uh, poster child. From what I've seen on most you know, pen forums and stuff like that, um, so this pen I, I had really high hopes for, and it was a little disappointing, but overall, uh, I, I think it's I think it's pretty decent uh, for the price. So we'll go over all that, um, but first let's go ahead and jump into a size comparison. All right, here we have it next to the Lamy All Star. Well, this is the LX, but Lamy All Star Safari, etc. Uh, they're all the same size. You can see it's a little bit longer than that, but not by much. Um, and the cap is a bit more narrow, but the clip protrudes. They're they're very similar in size here, and it is uh, just a touch longer as well than the Pilot Metropolitan. Again, um, it's it's kind of in between these two in terms of, of width, maybe, but in terms of length, it's just a little bit longer than each of the two. All right, here it is uncapped, and you can see it's it's literally fractions of a centimeter larger than the uh, Lamy All Star Safari, etc., and is a decent bit larger than the Metropolitan. Most of that is in nib length. If you compare just the section to the end of the body, very similar to the Metropolitan, and a bit shorter than the uh, Lamy Safari, just because of that number six size nib there. All right, on to what I like about this little pen. Um, first up, the design. It's it's very, very interesting. They take it from a complete circle to a square with rounded corners. I'm kind of trying to show you there. Um, and how they do this is it's basically completely cylindrical. It does do a bit of a swell right around here. And then as you get about midway up the cap, it starts transitioning into this square shape with these rounded corners um it really is squaring the circle as it goes down it's a very very interesting design um i don't know of any other pens that do exactly like this so this is a very interesting take and for this you know 40 dollar price range you really don't see many pens taking design risks quite like this those generally stay below 20 dollars or you know above a couple hundred so it's nice to see something visually interesting in this in this area um, there's a few other colors as well. This is probably one of the more popular ones. This is the gunmetal in red. They also have gunmetal in gray and gunmetal in blue, and I think they have a solid blue one. You can get it in a couple different colors. It is always going to be this metallic finish, though. I think this would look really appealing in a matte finish. That's just my opinion, though. The clip is pretty good as well. Um, it is hinged, so when you lift the clip, you can actually see, if I can get it to focus here, you can see it dip down there. It's pretty easy. It has enough ramp to slip over a pocket or something like that. It's probably going to be too heavy for a shirt pocket, but for jeans or something like that, it'll be just fine. And it uh, slides into my knock pen case with a little clip over it, just fine. The capping mechanism is very pleasant. It does feel a little odd at first. I was honestly wondered, or uh, worried rather, that I was going to break the nib. And that's just because when you go to recap it, there's this, when it gets about here, it's a little bit of a a push to click. It is very pleasant now that I've used it, and it's it's just about perfect amount of pressure to uncap it. Um, capping it requires a bit more than I would like, maybe, but uncapping it's a very pleasant experience. It's ready to go. The section's pretty nice. It has this ring around it just to prevent your fingers from slipping off. It's a decent length. It's not too bad. Um, and the step up here, while being a little sharp, isn't that huge. So that's not too bad overall. The nib is, it's, in, in reference to the nib, it's just fine. You know, it's it's fairly smooth. It is a medium nib. It writes pretty well. Um, there's a few things I don't like about it, but we'll come back to those. But in general, the nib performs okay. Um, these do take a standard international uh, cartridge converter. They do come with a converter and a cartridge. Um, this pin posts fairly well. It does post um, somewhat deeply, but it is extremely back heavy just due to the cap weighing so much. So keep that in mind. And last thing um, on the like list is actually the packaging. So 
So just like with the Monteverde Rodeo Drive that I reviewed a couple days ago, you get the same kind of leatherette box in this kind of cardboard sleeve, and it's hinged and it opens up. It's, you know, all that great stuff. Um, so that's, especially for a pin at this price range, that's, that's pretty decent. Um, you know, again, it'd make a great gift to someone, and especially to maybe a younger crowd, I think these, these colors would appeal a bit more. Um, maybe somebody late teens, early 20s may find these a bit more attractive. Personally, red and black's not really my thing, but, you know, I know a lot of, a lot of people my age who really, really like this color scheme. So... Um, the included gift box is a nice touch if you want to give this to somebody, especially if it's going to be their first fountain pen. You know, it's just a nice little uh, kind of experience, I guess, opening the pen and having it in this really nice box. On to the neutral. So I didn't mention size in the last one because it's just a tad bit shorter than I would like. It's not bad, but it just feels a little small, I guess, with the nib. And the weight is just a little bit heavy. Um, specifically, it's it's a little back weighted. You can kind of see there's just dipping down just a bit. Well, you may not be able to see, but it's dipping down in the back just a bit. And if you post it, it's going to be definitely back weighted. Um, minor complaint, but it is something worth mentioning. Next up, the nib is just hideous. Um, these Monteverde nibs are so unattractive. Um, I'll see if I can get it to focus here and kind of show you. So you have Monteverde written there on the side like diagonally then you have uh, a weird mountain kind of shape that they cut through then you have the nib marking right there it says m this is monteverde usa again at the bottom and then it has the mountain sigil again in the middle there it's just not a pretty nib um i feel like they made this in microsoft paint maybe um i really wish they'd do something a bit more either classy or unique this is unique but not in like a cool sense it's like um it's like that drunk uncle that you have um that everybody thinks is funny but he's kind of a mess and you don't like being around him that much that's kind of this nib um it writes okay but the design's just awful and i think if you're going to get it in any color get it in this black that way it's not that visible on the rodeo drive it's very very visible and it just the more I've used these pens, the more it bothers me. It bothers me on there, too, but I don't think I mentioned it on that one. Um, next up, there's this little plastic insert you can see on the cap. Well, it's not little. It's most of the cap, but it's white, and it gets stained very, very easily. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're using this pen. That's probably going to get some ink up in there. All right, on to the dislike. So did anything bother me about the Impressa? Yes. Um, a couple of things. The, the biggest one is going to be the flow of the nib. It's, it's a very wet pen. I'm going to go and say that. And I generally enjoy wet pen. However, this is too wet for me. Um, I have fixed this. So during the writing sample, you won't experience any of this. But when I first got it, it was dripping ink. And I'll insert a clip of that here now. Um, that's just a massive deal breaker for me. And to be honest, unless someone sends me a pen for free, I'm not spending any more of my money on any Monteverde pens. It's just a waste. All three of them that I've had have had issues. I've had them at different price ranges. You know, I had the Monza that's like $10 or $6, $16, whatever the heck it is. Um, I've had this one, which retails for about 40 and I've had the Rodeo Drive, which retails for 68 and they've all had just nib and flow issues. It's not worth it. Um, in my opinion, I will say this is the best nib out of the three that I've used. So that, you know, take that for what it is. Um, however, it's still extremely frustrating that I can't get a pen to write properly out of the box and that I have to work on it. Um, I've since fixed the Rodeo Drive. I've since fixed this one but it's just not great, you know, um, having that experience after spending money. It's not wonderful. Uh, next up is the fit and finish on this. In general, it is okay. There are just gaps and seams and stuff. Um, I haven't had any issues with this one, but I've heard reports of the plating falling off. You can see a weird little thing with the clip there. Um, I think that's just glue residue, to be honest, but it's stupid that it's on there. 
it's just not great. Um, it's okay in certain spots back here. It's all right. Um, you can feel a, a bit of a gap here at the cap. You can see probably that it, there's a bit of a lip right here. Um, that's because it swings over on this side. Just little stuff like that. It's just not wonderful. Um, the step right here that I mentioned is a little sharp, so keep that in mind. And the last thing is this god-awful Monteverde logo. I hate their font. It is just... Oh, it's terrible. Um, and then they put it on this, you know, dark gray, almost black pen, this metallic pen, in matte white writing, and I don't know why they do that. It's so bad looking. It just... Like, when you see this pen... It's, 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 when you see this pen, it's very unique, and you're just kind of appreciating the curves, the design, the swoop of the clip, you know, um, you know, a lot of thought went into turning this from a circle to a square, um, and then you just have this, and you're wondering why they would put that on there and make it so noticeable. It's on the clip already. You know, why not do it on the cap band, and instead of coloring it, just etch it, that way the and then and then played it with the red. That way the writing can be red too. It can just kind of be recessed in there. It'd be a lot more subtle and a lot better way to make your logo and pen model on this pen. I think that's just really tacky way to do it. Let's uh let's go ahead and go over another writing sample. Okay, on to the writing sample. So here we have the Monteverde Impressa. A medium nib and again this nib is it's pretty decent to be honest um, I really don't have any issues with it that skip on the B right there was my fault completely um, the flow is certainly not an issue on this it is a super super wet pen and you can get some line variation out of there we have our first writing line a line with some pressure I'm sorry a normal writing line then a line with some pressure. So you can coax a, a, a bit of line variance out of this pen. It is not impossible. It's fairly easy to do. I mean, you do have to put a bit of pressure on it, but you can certainly get some out of there. So if you're looking for something like this, you know, this nib might be for you. Um, I will warn you, you may have to do some nib work on it. So if you're not comfortable, maybe don't do that. And that's part of the reason this pen bothers me is it's aimed at an, an entry level market. In terms of fountain pens, $40 for a pen for most people is just batshit crazy. But this pen's aimed at that entry-level market. And for $40, you even for that, you really can't have issues with the nib. Because if I was some you know random person who had never tried a fountain pen before, and I started writing with this and it's dripping ink everywhere, I'm probably never going to use a fountain pen again because I'm going to think I'm doing something wrong. But it's not me, it's it's the company. All right, on to the conclusion. So, what are my overall thoughts? Was I impressed by the Impressa? Not really. Um, honestly, one pen that I've, I've never reviewed on here, because they just keep going up in price, and I, I I don't know. If I can pick one up used, I'll pick one up. Anyway, the... Um, oh, God, I forgot about it. Faber-Castell Loom, the Loom. If I can get a Faber-Castell Loom on here... I will show you what a formerly $40 pen can do. That pen was impressive. I've tried a couple of them. They were fantastic. I just never bought it for whatever reason. And I keep kicking myself for not having bought the one with the orange cap. Ugh. Or the purple, even. I really liked it as well. Anyway, um, if you're going to spend $40, I don't often recommend Lamy because their prices are kind of high for what you get, at least at the entry level. If you want the Lamy 2000, jump on that thing. It's amazing. But right here, this is just a little bit pricey. But for a better overall experience, I would go Lamy. The consistency is just there. Um, the fit and finish is significantly better. It's it's lighter, but still has some weight to it. <clears throat> very interesting clip. Very unique design. If you hate the grip, maybe you don't get that one. But there's a lot of other pins. For for less than $40, you can pick up the Twisby Eco, which kicks the shit out of this every single day. The Twisby Eco is amazing, and I love that pin so much. 
go a little bit higher, get the 580 or get the mini. Any of those are better than this. Not saying this is just outright terrible. If I didn't have to do any work on it, it would be decent. But for $40 and me having to do nib work, it's just not worth it. I think for $25, this pen is an excellent buy. If you can pick it up around there, go ahead. Other than that, probably skip over it. I know it's not the most popular thing in the world to say, but yeah. Anyway, um, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments section. That's where comments belong. If you like the content, feel free to subscribe. If you have any recommendations for anything else I can review, just leave it down in the comments as well, and I'll take a look at it. And I'll probably not review it, but I'll look at it, and I'll comment back and reply to you. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys.